Suns fans, you know what time it is in the PHX. Empire of the Suns. Phoenix Suns. The Empire of the Suns podcast is brought to you by Sonic. Mmm, Sonic. Empire of the Suns. Hello there, and welcome to the Empire of the Suns podcast. My name is Kellen Olson, joined, as always, by Kevin Zimmerman. Hello, Kevin. Hi, we're here for the funeral, eh? We got two microphones. Oh, you wore black. Look at that. Yeah, Good I did. I, I got black jeans. I've been thinking ahead with my fashion for this. It was mm. pretty easy, though. Yeah. How about that? Uh, sun season is over. They got swept by the Minnesota Timberwolves. They lost tonight 122 to 116. We'll talk about the game a bit, and we'll talk about the season a bit. Uh, for those of you looking for the complete teardown uh, and the complete evaluation, like what's happening next, can they trade Kevin Durant, can they trade Bradley Beal, who are the head coaching candidates when they fire Frank Vogel, all this kind of stuff that people are talking about, we will sort of not sidestep, but we'll touch and go on this episode. And I think next week, especially once we have more clarity on the head coaching situation, I would presume, in the next couple of days, that is when we will really unravel what went wrong here but if you're looking for the big old rant or if you're looking for the big old tear down of what this season was keep looking brothers and sisters it's not going to be on this episode and if that is where we send you on your merry way then god bless you have a good rest of your year and we'll see you back next season uh the suns lost this game 122 116 like i mentioned uh kevin this was in some ways a fitting end and what I'll mean by that is everything that we have talked about this season in terms of what is your identity what is your style of play how are you guys able to bounce between doing this and that just like any good team would and I tweeted somewhere in the mid to late first quarter they're going to need 70 plus from Booker and Durant to win this game because clearly they they, they went small I got my wish hey um Nurk didn't he started still that's not totally what I asked for but hey I asked for a lot of small ball I got it I was pleased um but what the Suns weren't able to do is like actually activate their offense which is what I thought they would be able to do when they did this Minnesota was just like okay you guys can score 82 combined points whatever we'll just take care of the other guys we'll try and rebound our best and then we just don't think you guys can stop us enough on the other end and they were totally uh right Minnesota was and I think that their inability to go that next step that next layer beyond incredible shot making by Devin Booker incredible shot making by Kevin Durant they couldn't get past that point to how many times did we see like multiple passes around the perimeter tonight we didn't see one possession like that right uh we the, saw the we one. saw the one at the very <laughs> end Bradley that ended in a last turnover, turnover yeah which was one incredible defense by the Timberwolves but then two was yeah like Minnesota was confident in their ability to rotate if they wanted to trigger that that was like one of the few times that they made Minnesota recover like that and they did so really well uh and played really good defense there and then of course Brad made the play that he couldn't make but to me that's where I wanted to start just because they just weren't able to get into like their offense in a way that would have benefited the entire team. It was just more so these two guys have it going. And look, I think Book and Katie were both looking for those areas to try and spread the ball around and get it moving. But Minnesota was just not going to let it happen. They were just staying home a lot, and they were like, okay, go, go nuts. We're just confident that everything else is going to work out, and they were right. To me... The word microcosm comes to mind, and you kind of touched on a lot, but I I mean, I'm going to have to touch on why Frank Frank Vogel's job is at risk is because you see the mistakes. Um, I thought the effort level was bumped to a 10 or 11 when it, you know, maybe it was an 8 or 9. It wasn't terrible in the other games. They just got outplayed, and even when it's a 10, you still lose. You still lose when you have your two best players playing at pretty – meeting expectations for sure if not exceeding on booker's end and and that just can't happen um to me that play where they got katie post iso right side swings it out literally touches every player's hand goes bang 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 to the other side beal in the corner he drives is run off the line which like minnesota's defense did an awesome job of that and then he tries to make a 
tough, 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 like bounce pass through three quarters of the width of the court back to KD on the other corner, like just not a thing that's going to happen. Um, and then Ant comes down, whams on him and KD, and that's kind of the microcosm. Like you're not going to get it done. You're not going to make the plays you need to make. Um, even in a game where you did, this felt like the game where everything else could be going right to get a win. So I think that is the microcosm. Um, also the microcosm of Frank going to that small ball, and he admitted, I don't like doing that, but we got to get Rudy out of the paint. They did it too late. It also opened up Book, by the way, to have that big game, and, and KD, and the offensive rhythm was there. So they just made a thing, made a big change too late. And the one quote that kind of stuck out to me again, going back to Frank's job security, Book said after the game, like, I thought we did a good job, you know, in games one and two against Ant relatively. And then he said there's such thing as over-adjusting when in Game 3 they started blitzing the crap out of him and then Ant just tore him apart because their defense was so strung out. I, he probably didn't mean that as a shot, Frank, but kind of openly questioning what Frank's adjustment against Ant was and how it failed. So we have an offensive adjustment. I guess the small ball was defensive too, but you have that adjustment being too late and another adjustment in this series being book kind of said it's not needed (laughs) like that's that's gonna make your players question you and if your players are questioning you can you be on the job and that's where we're at now kevin and the team in general has been more open in the last couple of weeks about finally sort of i guess admitting is the wrong word but sharing with us that yeah we only play well in spurts and various other details and kevin tonight the furthest he went because i I remember this last year he just doesn't like making excuses doesn't like saying anything that could be portrayed as an excuse and he said that like they were only good in spurts and then he said like we couldn't like figure out a style of play basically and Mm -hmm. that was i think that was the first time i heard a player specifically say that um the athletic report comes out just a lot of detail in there, but not exactly. Is there a player on this roster or players that think this is untenable and just like this is broken? I don't think so. And even in that report, it's like, yeah, they're questioning Frank Vogel. Or do they absolutely hate it here? I don't think so. And that's the weirdest part is like they're in this in-between where it's like, be honest with your opinions, people. And that's kind of the, the just we've kind of gotten just in what they've said, like no panic, they're trusting in the system and all that. But it's like you guys got to have the fact that we didn't have the whole team meeting, players meeting this season is. I'm sure there were already. I'm sure like, there I'm were. Sure there were. We were, we're waiting for more to come and there's going to be more to come. I was not shocked at all to see the click publish on that as soon as the season's mm-hmm. over. Report kind of come down and what I wrote about on ArizonaSports.com. We're going to get to Ant. Ant was incredible. I feel particularly blessed as a basketball fan, a fan of this sport, uh, to see a performance like that and for the fourth straight year see something like Supernova like yeah. that. Going back to Giannis, Luka, Jokic, and now Ant. And I came into the series like, I think they're going to lose to Minnesota, but I, but I don't think it's going to be that kind of spectacular. And then he just... What I what I called the uh, the dunk with like two minutes left. I said it was less of a dagger and more of a two hand great sword. That was my Baldur's Gate three brain coming in, just like <laughs> I don't know what that, that means. That was but not just a stab. Sounds good. Like you know what a dagger is as a yes, small little knife, but a two handed great sword is like you, you got two. Yeah. He's like by the way, pounds and he's swinging around. Beal should have fouled out on that play. We'll we'll talk about him in a sec. Um, but what I was getting to on that point was. Basketball will reveal what's going on. If your team's tight and you guys yeah, like each other true. and you get along and everything's flowing together, we are going to see it. We're going to see it not only when things are going well, but when things aren't going well. We're going to see all of that. We're going to be able to tell. I say we as people who love the game and watch it all the time and yeah. just notice the little stuff and why it's my favorite sport on the planet. The inverse applies as well. <laughs> 
when y'all aren't getting along, y'all aren't cohesive, connected, able to play together, able to get the benefits off playing together, we're going to notice. The we're, details. We don't need... The communication. All this bleep that happens behind closed doors, that court out there does not allow that. We're going to see it. And we saw it all freaking year. All mm-hmm. year. I was out for four games sick. I come back here in December. I message you on Teams. <laughs> like second quarter of the first game. And I'm like, Kevin, what's going on? <laughs> what is what is going on out there? What What is this? Why can't... And this is what we got. And it was it was here all year. And my basic theme and something that I wrote in a different way for whatever story I wrote this in, I can't even remember at this point, was the hope essentially for this season. Me, my brain in December, January went to, okay, the roots of this are not going away. Like yeah. this is in your team. Now, can you guys grow enough, develop enough, improve enough to where all of these roots don't come out or at, at least, the worst possible time. Can I say, mm-hmm. if you have these warts and these flaws, at least have an identity where you're like, you know what? We're not going to be good at... I think I said this last, po- last podcast. We're not going to be good at rebounding. We're going to be okay on defense because we we're in the right spots as limited as a roster might be. But we're just going to bang away a bunch of threes or we know what we're going to go into when things get tough. Like, they just didn't... They didn't have an identity to even half get there and make up for their flaws sorry continue no it's okay um it's the same thing we've been saying again let's say it in new ways for six straight months that's what this podcast became if you've been listening to most of the episodes you've heard us try our best to talk about basketball while not harboring on the same exact thing that we couldn't get away from with this team but the point being it didn't even get to that point they regressed after the all-star break and then it became, oh gosh, are they going to even make the playoffs? Like, all of these roots are actually just not even like the roots. They're, they're like, to stick with the metaphor, like their DNA now. It's just become embroiled in them. So it's like, they were never going to escape that. And it was just a matter of what circumstances could help them overcome it. Here's what they got an awesome matchup in round one. Yeah. All the quote, everyone in the in that room over there post game telling us about how why this matchup was bad for them and it's like well all we were talking about coming in was how good this matchup was for you guys and I still believe that this was a great matchup for them it was one they had confidence with it didn't matter one bit they had a superstar who they were able to contain for three games and they still contained him in those ways somewhat but ultimately when push came to shove they could not keep him contained. For 48 minutes. <laughs> there was always slippage. Um, the play you were mentioning with like Gobert and Towns and Edwards, I don't know if it's the same one I'm going to bring up, but two minutes into the third quarter, we're still looking at mm-hmm. Devin Booker and Kevin Durant doing everything. And Carl Anthony Towns at this point, shout out Carl Anthony Towns. Um, yeah, weird dude game, yeah. does weird stuff on the court. Um, a very enigmatic personality i'll put it as and i don't mean that as a slight like he he seems really entertaining to he be will around pound his chest in the first quarter of a seemingly kind of insignificant play but there's there's weird stuff going on sometimes and and I, and i'm saying that not as someone who necessarily agrees with that take or like wants to hammer that take but it's just a lot of the reason why he's disliked so much for mm-hmm. whatever reason the reason why i i haven't come to like appreciate his game is just because he he melts down a lot and in this game, he did the opposite of meltdown. He held their team up for over two quarters. There were a lot of really bad possessions Minnesota ran because Conley couldn't get it going. Ant couldn't get it going beyond just kicking it out to a three-point shooter. And he just hit a ton of shots. And then uh, it's like a Nas Reed floater or something like that. Cat goes around Kevin Durant, gets the offensive rebound. Who's that in the corner? It's Anthony Edwards. Who was on Anthony Edwards? That was Devin Booker. Edwards hits the three. Next possession down. Suns, I think, have a terrible possession that ends with someone chucking it up from the corner when the shot clock's expiring, something like that. Eel. And your number one scenario, or worst case, what, what you're worried about there is what I'm trying to get to, is the run out. Run out happens. So when that shot goes up, everyone in their head should be like, we got to get back. Like, this is probably going to be transition. We got to get back. 
Uh, Anthony Edwards is wide open, hits a three in yeah. transition. Guess what? That rhythm that you kept him out of for two quarters, it's gone. And then he went insane mm-hmm. in the third and fourth quarter. He had the um, the dream shake, whatever it was, the 20-footer over there. And that's when I was like, oh, yeah. they, they, are, they are in serious trouble. And then he went on to have a moment that was, uh, like I said, cool to be around here for, but all it took was Booker and Durant missed shots on three straight possessions. Minnesota scored after those three possessions. And then they kind of had control of the game. And I don't know how you felt watching it. I don't know how Jeremy felt watching it, but it was still a one possession game for pretty much the whole fourth quarter until the end of it. But if you were blind watching it without the scoreboard, you would have thought the Suns were down by like 10 or 15 at that point. The momentum was just, yeah. And Ant was just vibing. Conley was hitting threes. Um, Towns was still affecting the game. I, I thought that the Chris Finch taking a Mike Conley and what tearing his patella, which that stoppage was like, that is the only thing that could stop the T Wolves from like winning this game right now, and it didn't. Um, there, your your head immediately went to like hope he's okay, and then yeah. your second head was was like, is this going to affect where the game was headed? Which was yeah. that the Suns were going you, to lose. You and lose then your heads after you watch your head coach. Like that was my only thought. Like if. There was a weird moment where Nurk missed his second free throw on purpose. Royce got a wide open three. Like that could have gotten it could have gotten weird from yeah. there. And like Conley like fell over as he was calling a timeout. And if Nurk or as he got fouled, and if Nurk wouldn't have fouled him, Conley might have just traveled there. Um, it was a weird ending, like we said coming in, and like we said um, after game three. Like these games are really hard to win. Like Minnesota, that's a challenge. This is a challenging game to win, and they did it. Uh, despite everything the Suns uh, did, Kevin, to go back to style and just their inability to – we were focusing on offense so much just because, like, that's supposed to be – I think they were better defensively in this series than offensively, right? Like, that that's pretty yeah. – and and that's, that's problematic. 26 three-point attempts despite all the space. They had, like, full halves where the defense, like, today's first half was awesome yeah. defense. And, like, yeah, the, the T-Wolves are going to knock down shots and bring that average back up. It's not going to sit there for a full game, and it's not the Suns losing anything um, or not adjusting even. It's, yeah, it's just, like, you would expect this game to be one where you can keep up with them, and they just couldn't. And, and again, I'm not sure that's the best offensive team. Maybe I'm still underrating that team completely, but I think... It's just the offense is not there. 20 assists uh, in this game. It seems like every time the Suns exit, they have really low assist totals that point towards dysfunction in some sort of way. Turnovers were not bad even, though. The turnovers were fine. The second chance points were fine until they weren't. Um, There were situations. They shot 51% in this game overall. Um, This was a ref show from the beginning. It was (laughs) a absolute crime against playoff basketball and everything that I love about it. I'm not mentioning his name because he doesn't deserve any attention and the fact that I'm having to do this spiel right now to give him more attention is infuriating to me. Sorry. I'm sure he's practicing his block thing in the mirror somewhere right now. Like, (laughs) get that dude out of here, man. It's ridiculous. Like, three minutes in, it was immediately clear. Like, oh, Ty Whistle tonight. Here's the November whistle in mid-April, late April. It was also very physical and no, yeah. There were some fouls, we don't, sure. We don't there were some to. fouls, sure. Um, Book, 13-21, 49-5-6. and six. His shot making was there all night. He was the one with 21 free throw attempts to immediately understand, like, oh, it's one of those nights, so I'm just going to go, 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 get in there, take the bumps. And he did that. Uh, beats the allegations of uh, elimination up, yeah. games and all that. Does not beat the allegations of how he played this season and in this series especially. Durant had the shot making going. We mentioned that shot threshold all the time. 12 of 17, four blocks, five assists, nine rebounds, 33 points. He was really, really good in this game. Two-way effort. I'm not saying that just because of the blocks. This was the worst game Bradley Beal has played as a Phoenix Sun. It is not close. He had six turnovers and six fouls, nine points, a rebound, two assists. Booker and Durant did what both you and I have been asking for all series, which is we know there's turmoil. We know there's things going on behind the scenes that are y'all aren't getting along in some form or facet, whatever relationship, the way the connections are going that they're not forming. Um, you guys are superstars or stars. You, you, you need to rise above it. Those two did. Brad went the opposite direction. 
Um, everyone's going to make a deal out of the thing with Vogel, whatever. Um, guess what? Vogel probably doesn't get along with some of these players. <laughs> I'm I'm really surprised after watching this basketball product <laughs> all season. Absolutely floored, I tell you, Mr. Zimmerman. <laughs> I'm just absolutely befuddled. Um, Josh Kogi got out there, did stuff. Uh, Nas Little, seven minutes. Hey, remember him. We'll talk about him this offseason. Uh, Eric Gordon, it was that Eric Gordon kind of night where – he got two threes to fall, but it just felt like the It was like the same thing as the last The cadence game. of the game, yeah. The cadence of the game was not benefiting. He played thirty nine minutes. Holy cow. To be yeah, fair. Honestly, that was his best defensive game. Yes, he is going to be I hope that I don't know why it came then. It's I like, hope that there's a safe way to fall asleep in an ice bath because he probably will be in one for the next <laughs> week. And I really hope that he's uh doing all right with that. Okay, big picture talk before we go. Um yeah, I, I think Vogel's gotta be done. I don't see – okay, the way that I'll preface it here before we get to these types of talks next week mm-hmm. is – sorry, I kicked the camera, Jeremy. Very unprofessional of me. Oh, my goodness, the shot's <laughs> ruined. The heater's still Two alive, baby. Down, Heat okay. culture. Heat culture. Let's go. Um, the failure in this season, mm-hmm. hot take, is on the decision makers who hired Frank Vogel because yeah. – and not for the reasons that you think I might say. Because you needed a match for this team in terms of, one, someone that the team would respect and listen to for the entirety of the season. Not saying they didn't res- – they, they probably had – I assume they had respect for Frank Vogel over the course of the season in patches. But for the whole year, doesn't seem like it. I mean, the – freaking Sham story said one player had to hold himself back from laughing when he was yelling at them during the Clippers games which by the way speaking of like the court showing us no kidding yeah no kidding you're telling me that they were yelling at each other behind the scenes during those two absolute disgrace disgraceful basketball performances but my point being you had to find the right guy that would command this team and get them in the right place especially after Monty leaves especially yeah and two you had to find the right personality match to uh, offset is the word I went to in my head but to mesh with two very similarly minded guys in Devin Booker and Kevin Durant who were very similar and what wound up being one of the downfalls of this team and I look forward to being wrong if this is the case but those two being so like-minded, I think, hurt this team as a whole this year. I hate yeah. reading into the personality stuff. You know this. I, I absolutely despise it. But this basketball team, this stupid basketball team, has given me no choice but to <laughs> go here and go there. Um, but they needed the right type of voice to offset the types of gaps in leadership that you might see. I guess is the way I'll phrase that because, again, I'm using very specific maybe language because I'm not in the locker room. But that is where there was a clear divide, in my opinion. And if any of what I'm saying is partially true, then he's just got to go. Because is is he going to come back next year and they're all going to be like, all good, that year sucked, but now we're going to listen to you. It's like now we're going to play the way you want us to play. Frank mentioned threes pregame, and they took like four in the first nine minutes or whatever. And again, to the point of the Clippers game, remember the 20 threes and in 27, 20 of their 27 shots were threes in that second Clippers game. I'm guessing he yelled at them about threes after the game, and then they're like, oh, we'll get up threes. We'll show you threes. (laughs) And then what ensued was one of the strangest quarters of basketball I've ever seen in my life. So all of that said, um... At no fault of the effort from the guy, but it's, yeah. it's just he's a good basketball mind and a good basketball coach, but it was not even like a round peg and square hole is a, is a complete undersell of what this was in terms of the personalities meshing. Uh, and then I'll hand it off to you here with your thoughts on the situation before we get to beyond that because that's where I have some concerns as well. I think the personality thing is much bigger than the basketball things. Yes, um, I believe that the defense, honestly, he did a good job on the defensive end um, with this personnel group. 
I think it's a respect factor and an ideas factor of respecting ideas, and he did not give them that. Again, the the Booker quote today that stuck out to me about Game 3 over adjusting against Ant. You mentioned the threes that they got in that weird Clippers game, and they spaced it out today and didn't get up. And He even admitted to postgame, like, thought I'd, we'd get up more threes, just didn't get them up. Um, it goes back to Monty Williams leaving and saying... I don't know on his last night as coach, I don't know whether we're, you know, the ball moving team or the ISO team. I just don't know what we are. And someone has to come in and decide that for them and have the command to say, this is what we're going to do to fix that. Um, whether that's defense or offense, it is about command. Um, Cause like, you're not going to get a perfect roster, whether they stand pat and have most of this team coming back under a new coach or the same coach or if they try to really blow things up as much as you can blow them up and try to fix the roster. Um, you just need someone who can command and get the ideas across. And, again, the inconsistency, I think when you go down to it, it's those inconsistencies show up because you're not being held accountable by someone in leadership. And if Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are not going to be those rah-rah, talk-a-lot guys, which people have gone on the record and say they're not, and they've said it themselves in some fashion um then you're not gonna have a good team so like there's a reason this team went and got thad young and isaiah thomas not to play didn't hardly did thad play in the playoffs no uh but there's a reason he was there they were trying to they were trying to patch holes of leadership rah, rah. um our friend of the podcast former guest on this podcast hopefully a guest again in the future mike v hill of the timeline podcast Thoughts to them and Suns fans. A lot of screaming on their post pod that I'm going to listen to <laughs> on the way home, I imagine. Um, he tweeted, uh, there was the Woj r- r- report? It was hardly a report. It's people no shots at No shots at the GOAT, but it, it was, was just like he's heard from other GMs that Frank Vogel's job might be in peril. And it's That's like, hey, it we, all three uh, of us can... Relay that information pretty well too, you know. So, I, I anyway, think it's in peril too. Yes, I, I agree with that peril statement. Um, <laughs> on the topic of peril, my quote tweeted that and said, "I don't know if you heard this one before, Kev. I hope the Suns have a plan in place if they choose to let him go." <laughs> this okay. is literally oh, what let's... we talked about last year, and that is where Mike tweeting that. Not saying I agree or disagree with it, but it was just it gave me the heebie-jeebies because it was like here, here's here's my here we are again. Is it really Ty Lue or bust again? And guess what, everyone? I think it's Ty Lue or bust again. By the way, <laughs> I don't know if that's. I, I said some. Cr- I'll we got tell, a, I'll, there's more next week, but yeah. I I told Jeremy, noted my Hammy Heat fan. I was like, are they gonna? I don't like who's on the market. Are they just gonna go to Eric Spolstra and say? here's the most amount of money anyone has ever seen as a head basketball coach times 10. Please leave the Miami heat. Like and he's going to say, no, that's a joke because of the heat culture. Even if Matt Ishbio was even richer than he is and did that, I think he would, that would not happen. But I was saying that cause it's like, I can't think of any other good idea. Like other than, expecting the Clippers to blow it up, which is still like 10 steps down the road of where they are right now. Yeah, and it's it's a bad offseason for the type of voice you're looking for, I guess, if that makes sense. Like there are certain coaching carousels where the type of name or the type of voice we're talking about is there. Like Mike Budenholzer is the other credentialed head coach, but he doesn't seem like that type of dude uh, very much. So, Is there some crazy young college coach up and coming that like no that one command there's just not i don't know i don't know where you're getting a good coach that's just gonna be like oh yeah they're in great hands no yeah they're in trouble no matter what like (laughs) this is not a good time to be looking for a new head coach which they very well could be uh this is not a good time for them to try and reshape the roster because they don't really have any great avenues of doing so Oh, uh, something we'll be talking about a lot. I mean, we will next week. We will discuss like should they trade Kevin Durant? Should they trade Devin Booker? All this stuff, which, as you can tell, I'm thrilled to discuss next week. So make sure and tune in for that. <laughs> um, 
I don't think they can trade Bradley Beal. I don't think any contract is untradeable in the league anymore, but I think that would His be extremely the difficult to This is the least tradable of the big three, So right? then it so. comes down to how can you upgrade the rest of the roster? Can you... We'll, we'll get to it next week, but there's <laughs> there's certain ways for them to try. Can and trade so. Grayson Allen for a bit. But Nurkic look, we just did got this, played off the court. Okay. We did this all year last year. <laughs> And then everyone's coming out, coming for Bradley Beal. It's like they were not going to get anything for Chris. They couldn't trade Chris Paul for three role players. They would have done it. They couldn't get it. It was never going to happen. So here they are uh, again, and here we are again. Uh, third straight, pretty disappointing to say the least, Sun season. Hey, positives. <laughs> not a blowout like last two. Devin Booker showed up you're post game. Doing, you're doing the moral victories thing. Devin people Booker showed up post game. Oh, people are gonna hate this. Oh, that's it. That's the end. He was there. He was there. Took. He had some good things to say. Before we go, did you sense relief? I sensed relief from everyone that we talked to. Yeah. It seemed like relief. Like this is over. The last two were like embarrassing, shamed, failure. Sad. Mikel sad. was super sad after the. But Dallas this game. one he was, was distraught. By the way, being swept is not. Good guys, it's worse than losing your elimination game by a lot of points to me. Which, again, to close, speaks to our point that yes. this has been brewing all year, and there are certain endings like this with a sweep in the first round when you were expected to compete for a championship, where there would be immense frustration. But this frustration has been there all year, and yes, again, if there was any emotion that I felt from the guys who talked post game, it was book Kevin and then Vogel. It was like relief. That was like the most level-headed I've sensed Vogel be after a game in like three weeks. Not good, boss. Um, we'll be back next week. Yeah. We'll be back uh, if the Suns do make a change at head coach, if they have a head coach vacancy, head coaching vacancy, I guess we should put it as. I'm not turning uh, off my phone tonight, am I, Kellen? We'll be back. Uh, I'm going to. <laughs> Because I got to wake up and go talk to James Jones tomorrow, so I got to get the some sleep owner for that. Not sleep is what I've learned. Uh, but yeah, much more coming. Like that's the thing is that for the way that this season ended, the intrigue with what's next is going to be at the top of every discussion, uh, at the top of a lot of discussions going forward. Thanks so much if you're still here. I, sure, I do sure, this sure, every sure. now and then yeah, on the episodes. If you're still reminder. listening at this point, we really do appreciate all of your support this year. Thank you for listening. Thank you for reading. Again, I know that this was massively disappointing for a lot of people, and I understand a lot of people, rightfully so, are livid and just want to see this whole thing nuked, and they want to just have a new era of Suns basketball. Like They're over this. They're done, and I completely understand. Your feelings are valid. All of that kind of stuff. Um, but that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Trying to brace you guys. You know I do my best to do that from time to time. And we're just going to have to see how this team adjusts and, and, and goes forward. Hopefully, uh, Kevin, the next season of basketball we cover when Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are playing on the same team, it's more fun. I, I've told people this. I don't think I've said it here in this space. This podcast that we have been doing, what, seven years uh, we started either books rookie year or books second year, so this will be seven or eight. I this one has been the most difficult to do a weekly podcast. Yeah, because there's it was just so hard to talk about basketball stuff. Yeah, and and no, uh, Josh Jackson heater week. Like, is this the moment Josh Jackson's developing? Yeah, and I don't think it's anything to do with our jobs, our lives. Uh, I think it was this team. To, to your point about how tough it is as a fan to watch, like we're feeling it as somewhat detached, objective journalist men, like analysts, analysts. It's, it's tough, man. Um, so I, I get it. Anything else? No, the loud banging indicates we should probably be. We appreciate everyone who listens. That. Yeah, thank you very much. And again, it was it was fun, but it could have been more fun. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for hanging around. We really do appreciate. Thank you, you Jeremy, keep... behind the scenes. Jeremy Schnell, outstanding video work as always. And we'll be back next week in our studio without the loud banging noises <laughs> to talk about uh, off-season stuff. See you then.